I was given a box of old electronics and I was going through it to see what I wanted to keep and what I was going to toss because some of the stuff just not even worth touching. I found a couple of these little gadgets. What they do is they turn your lights on at night and they turn them off in the daytime. They're photoelectric controlled. Screw a regular light bulb in it. I figured this might be worth tearing down and seeing what's inside it. Now, some of you might know what this is before I turn it around, but for those of you that don't, this is an automatic photo cell that you can set to turn your lights on and off automatically. You can set this, see this adjusts how much light gets into it. So as you turn it around, you'll expose the photo cell. Where's the adjustment? There it is there. As you turn it around, you'll expose the photo cell in there and now the lights will turn on later in the evening and turn off earlier. Or if you take the light source away from them in a bit, the lights will turn on earlier. We're gonna, uh, I've got two of these things. I was, just, I was just given a box of old electronics and I just happened to find these things in there. I thought, this is kind of neat. I think we'll just, uh, we'll try this thing out and then we'll take it apart and uh, see what's going on inside this thing. So, screw this thing into my light socket. Screw in a good old incandescent bulb because a lot of these things don't work. Especially the older ones, they won't work with the newer modern um, LED type lights or fluorescent because they don't draw enough power to to activate them. So a good old incandescent bulb. We plug it in and uh, nothing happens. You see here, as it gets dark, the actually the light will actually, you see this is one that wouldn't work with uh, with an incandescent bulb or with a, 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 an LED I don't think because of the way this operates. As, as it gets dim, the light actually comes on gradually. So as it's starting to get dark outside, the light will come on slowly until it gets to full brightness. And then as a car drives up into your driveway and the headlights light up your front yard, the light will go out. Now with this a, a control, you can adjust how soon they come on. And in this case, if I turn it all the way down like this, the light will stay on all the time. But you can adjust what light level you want the light to come on. So, for example, if I set it just like this, now you see. So as it starts to get dark, if I put a shadow over here with my hand, you'll see that the light will come on sooner. These are kind of neat. So I don't think these are going to work with an LED or a uh, or a fluorescent, but we can find out. I can uh, certainly try one and see whether it'll actually work, and then we'll uh, open one of these things up and see exactly what's in there as far as circuitry. So first, we'll try it with a non-dimmable CFL bulb and see what happens. Plug the other end of this back in, and we'll see that it's not going to work. It's just going to sit there and flicker. So we know that it's not going to work with that CFL bulb. Let's try it with, this is a dimmable CFL bulb, and we'll see whether this one will work. So as it starts to get dim, or as it starts to get dark, this one actually will work, sort of. Not really. It will flicker. So you can't use that one either. Works better than the non-dimmable, but as you can see, as it gets brighter, as, it, as, as the sun would go up and down, this thing would start to flicker like crazy. So that's a fail. Let's try it with a dimmable LED. I have two types of dimmable LEDs. This is the Philips, what they call the uh, warm glow, and this is a conventional LED. I'll turn on the power, and what do you know? This one actually does do the job. 
well, sort of. As it starts to dim, the light comes on, and it does dim. So that one does work. Let's try the Philips Warm Glow. This one should start out on the on the warm white uh, LED, or actually it's warmer than warm white, and then go to the the warm or the the cooler or the warm white. So as it starts to get dim, you first of all see the first filament strike, which is the 2,000 degree Kelvin, and then as it gets darker. The other ones come on. So this one actually works too. And it works quite well. Warm glow starts first. And then the brighter of the lights. So we've confirmed that it works with both a dimmable LED as well as a warm glow dimmable LED. And it also works with a dimmable CFL but not a non dimmable one and finally I'm gonna try it with a non dimmable I took the top off this one just because I wanted more direct light I use it in a light fixture that has a reflector on it so I took the took the top off it this is a non dimmable let's see what the non dimmable LED does it shouldn't work and it doesn't it, even when it's on full it's flickering like crazy I don't know how that comes across I don't know how that comes across on camera, but it is flickering. You can see it really flickering there, but even when I completely cover the light, this is noticeably flickering. It's not showing up on camera, but you have to take my word for it. It's flickering. So um, that's not going to work. So now we know what it will and won't do. Let's, um, let's tear into this and see what's inside it. You hear that? I got a visitor that wants to come and visit me. Looking at these two units here, one's got a number 9064 and the other one's got 0014. So, um, they're quite a distance apart in manufacturing, if that's the serial number. It says on here, 150 watts maximum, 120 volts AC, BRK Electronics Canada, made in China, of course. So let's crack one of these open and just see uh, what exactly is inside this. I was expecting when I first grabbed this thing that it was going to be like the old fashioned type, which is the biometallic strip with the photocell heating the biometal strip to bend it away from the switch contact and then when the when the light stopped falling on the photocell, the biometallic strip would cool down and would make the mechanical connection. But that's not the case here. Because yeah, I have one that I, I don't even use it to tell you the truth because I put the lights on a timer, but I have one that is actually built into the house and it's supposed to turn the lights on, turn on the porch lights and lights down the side of the house at night and turn them off in the daytime. And uh, it's, it was, wasn't working properly because the neighbor put in a hedge that grew up and blocked the sun. So the lights were running all the time. So I put it on a timer. But the one I've got has got the old biometallic strip in it. Now this thing here, I need to use my, my spudger here to open this thing up. Let's see if it can crack this open. But this one here obviously is electronic control because it dims the lights down. It's got to figure out how to get into this thing. I like to get into it without destroying it because I might like to actually use this thing. I think if I just pop it in the corner here, I should be able to pop this thing open. Like that. Who needs a spudger when you can use a screwdriver?
and there it is. There is the unit itself. Let's just see what the uh, what the circuitry yields on this. I see it looks like a triac or an SCR in here. Uh, it looks like I might have to I might have to unsolder the the main terminal here. It looks like the, it looks like the main terminal is what's holding it in place. I'm getting tons of text messages now, and I apologize for not making any videos over the last. I've been I've been pretty busy for the past um, uh, the past week anyway. Um, as many of you know, I'm, I'm I'm still in the video production business. That's, I'm not out shooting weddings like I used to. I used to shoot lots of weddings, and I, I stopped doing that a number of years ago. But I still do archiving work, and I still do a lot of uh, video presentations. And I guess there's been a lot of people that have been dying lately because I've been doing, I've been doing a lot of uh, celebration of life uh, presentations where that's where the family will bring me, you know, boxes full of photos, and they have to be scanned and turned into a, uh, turned into, turn into a presentation. And of course, well, nobody plans to expire. These things generally tend to happen kind of suddenly, and then, of course, the arrangements have to be made. And well, you know, it, it, it to, say, to say the least, it's I've got a gun to my head because I've got deadlines that I have to meet to um, to uh, get these presentations done. So I kind of put my uh, repair videos on a bit of a hold there while I'm doing this because it gets pretty hectic. Where you know, I can spend hours and hours I just did one uh, I just did I just finished one I uh, just finished one actually earlier today and uh, I probably have uh, you know a good 10 to 12 hours of work on to just one presentation so they tend to take a bit of a priority when I'm uh, when I'm doing them and you know you never know right you never know when you're gonna get these I just get calls out of the blue and uh, have to Take the work when it comes in so i'm just going to take this little circuit board off so that we can examine it and see what's on here looks like there's a capacitor on there maybe we'll draw out the circuit and analyze the circuit so let's um let's take off this i'm just going to undo the solder here and uh, we'll remove the board so that we can get a better look underneath it and then i'll get some paper and we'll uh, draw the circuit out and See what makes this thing tick. Do a bit of reverse engineering. Yeah, that's what's holding it. So we'll just pop them out. There. Now we can uh, look at this and uh, I'll get some paper and we'll uh, analyze the circuit. Pretty simple. It's an IT40. It's got 4070. Is that what that is? Uh, nope. IT48 TD. It's got uh, two resistors, two diodes, I think that's a Zener, that one, and a capacitor, and of course, not nah, three resistors, and of course the photocell. That's all that makes this thing up. Let's uh, get some paper and draw the schematic up. So this is the schematic, and anybody that is familiar with light dimmers will know that this is a light dimmer. It's no different than a conventional incandescent light dimmer, but instead of having your rheostat to control the brightness, it's being replaced by a photocell, cadmium sulfite photocell. So our neutral just goes straight through, and as you can see, the neutral isn't at all connected to the circuitry. What we've got here is we've got a triac right here. Here's our triac. This one's called a diac, which is like a double diode. It conducts in both directions and uh, here's our main terminal one and main terminal two main terminal two our, our power comes in to main terminal one this acts as our switch main terminal two goes up to the bulb power also comes in it gets rectified half wave rectified through one diode here which applies a bias current that will go down through the photocell and through a blocking capacitor, it's also used to trigger. It's also used to trigger uh, through a 27k resistor. Goes into the diac, which then in turn is used to trigger the gate. When the when the resistance changes going through the photocell, because your capacitor is also connected here through this capacitor, 
Um, your AC is allowed to go through the photocell, so it actually goes, the AC signal couples through this capacitor and it goes through the photocell this way, which is used to apply a bias voltage here um, on this DC offset created through the, the bridge rectifier. So you've got a DC voltage here biasing it one way and you've got the, the reverse voltage from the going through the capacitor, going through the photocell, which will then bias on the DIAC, which will then trigger the gate of the TRIAC and turn the TRIAC on. So basically what happens, your AC voltage coming in through here, you've got your AC voltage going through here. If you cover up the photocell, this drops down to nothing because this goes to infinite resistance. The DC voltage coming through here, rectified through the um, half-wave rectifier, will turn off the DIAC so that you've got no um, power at all, you've got no current flowing through it. When light starts to hit the photocell, you start to get an AC signal coming through here, which is coupled through, passes through this resistor here, and applies an AC signal back into the DIAC. So basically what you've created here is you've created um, a light dimmer, as all this is. If you look up a schematic for a light dimmer, which I haven't, but if I were to look one up, I think we'd probably find it's very similar to this, if not identical. And I just did that by reversing, looking at the traces to see which, com which terminals were connected to what and reverse engineered this. Only mistake I made here is I unsoldered the uh, unsoldered the terminals, thinking that the the uh, contact for the light bulb was part of the bugs in here um, was part of the base, but it actually is not. What was holding it in was just the plastic clips, so I didn't actually have to unsolder that, and I soldered it back up so that I can put this thing back together. This diac, or sorry, this triac is an isolated tab. So this tab here is isolated from it. That's why there's no heat sink. It's not needed. It's only going to dissipate 150 watts maximum. Uh, this could probably handle a lot more current than that, but it would have to be on a heat sink, and it's not. So um, because of that, the rating on this is 150 watts maximum. Anyway, that's basically how this thing works. It's actually pretty simple. If we look up a light dimmer circuit, we'll see that our light dimmer circuit is actually very, very similar. We've got a diac and a triac capacitor, resistor to build up charges. This one uses three capacitors, but uh, it's this actually this one's for 230 volts as well, but you know, very, very similar, very similar circuit to what we've got here. Basically a light dimmer is all this thing is. So I'm gonna put this light dimmer back together and um, I'll put this thing back together and maybe even put the thing in service. Not that I, I don't know what I would use this for but um, we'll put it back together anyway. So just snap together like that. And the base should slide onto this thing. Make sure I get the tab underneath so that it makes a connection like that. Snap that together. And uh, plug it in. And there we go. Automatic light dimmer. Gotta like simplicity. Thanks for watching, and we will um, catch you again real soon. Got a few projects coming up here. Got lots of stuff to work on. And uh, when I get some time, I'll be getting into some of my own gear. I've got an old, I've got a, well, I've got several. I've got several pieces of uh, amplifiers and electronics that I've got to uh, get to when I get some time. But... Uh, We'll make it happen. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.